Hello everybody, it's Mouse again here. Now I'm very late today, so I'm sorry you probably didn't get a story before bedtime today. But um, I was working very late, so um, I'm really sorry. So you'll have to wait until tomorrow probably to hear this story. Today it's this one, The Tale of Benjamin Bunny. And I couldn't find a bunny today. But I could find some somebody else with long ears. This is a kangaroo with a little joey in its pouch here. So this kangaroo, it doesn't really have a name, but he's going to sit with me while I read you the story. So we'll start. There's a little picture at the start here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, maybe if I move it a bit further away. But let's see, it's a bit of a shiny page, so it doesn't come out very clearly on, on the camera there. So we'll start. <clears throat> One morning, a little rabbit sat on a bank. He pricked his ears and listened to the trit-trot, trit-trot of a pony. The gig was coming along the road. It was driven by Mr McGregor, and beside him sat Mrs McGregor in her best bonnet. As soon as they had passed, little ben Benjamin Bunny slid down into the road and set off with a hop, skip and a jump to call upon his relations who lived in the wood at the back of Mr McGregor's garden. There he goes, running along. Now I'm not sure which is the best way to show you these pictures. There. You seem, the colours seem to, or the light seems to flicker a bit, but I hope you can see him there. That's Benjamin Bunny. That wood was full of rabbit holes and in the neatest, sandiest hole of all lived Benjamin's aunt and his cousins, Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. Now I read a story about them earlier this week. Old Mrs Rabbit was a widow. She earned her living by knitting rabbit wool mittens and muffetees. I once bought a pair at a bazaar. She also sold herbs and rosemary tea and rabbit tobacco, which is what we call lavender. There she is. She's got three of her bunnies there with her. Little Benjamin did not very much want to see his aunt. He came round the back of the fir tree and nearly tumbled upon the top of his cousin Peter. I don't know if you can see where Peter might be. You see his little ears hiding behind the bank there. Now, Peter was sitting by himself. He looked poorly and was dressed in a cotton pocket handkerchief. Peter, said Benjamin Bunny in a whisper, who has got your clothes? Can you see Peter there, just wrapped up in a red hunky? Peter replied, the scarecrow in Mr McGregor's garden, and described how he had been chased about the garden and had dropped his shoes and coats. If you remember that story, you'll remember what happened. Little Benjamin sat down beside his cousin and reassured him that Mr McGregor had gone out in a gig, and Mrs McGregor also and certainly for the day, because she was wearing her best bonnet. Yeah. That's what friends do. They reassure each other if they're in trouble. <clears throat> Peter said he hoped that it would rain. At this point, old Mrs Rabbit's voice was heard calling inside the rabbit hole, calling, Cottontail, Cottontail, fetch some more chamomile. Peter said he thought he might feel better if he went for a walk. So there's the two bunnies. They just got up. They went away hand in hand and got upon the top of sorry, and got upon the flat top of the wall at the bottom of the wood. From here they looked down into Mr McGregor's garden. 
Peter's coat and shoes were plainly to be seen upon the scarecrow, topped with an old tam o' shanter of Mr. McGregor's. Now, I'll show you where it is. Can you see there, down there on the wall here, and down in the garden in the distance, is the scarecrow with the coat and the shoes, and the tam o' shanter is that hat on the top there. Little Benjamin said, It spoils people's clothes to squeeze under a gate, and the proper way to get in is to climb down a pear tree. Peter fell down head first, but it was of no consequence as the bed below was newly raked and quite soft. Whoops, there he goes falling out of the pear tree. It had been sown with lettuces. They left a great many odd little footmarks all over the bed, especially little Benjamin who was wearing clogs. Little Benjamin said that the first thing to be done was to get back Peter's clothes in order that they might be able to use the pocket handkerchief. They took off the scarecrow. They took them off the scarecrow. There had been rain during the night. There was water in the shoes and the coat was somewhat shrunk. Benjamin tried the tam o'shanter on, but it was too big for him. Yep. Then he suggested they should fill the pocket handkerchief with onions as a little present for his aunt. Peter did not seem to be enjoying himself. He kept hearing noises. Uh, you see they're collecting all the onions in the red handkerchief. Benjamin, on the contrary, was perfectly at home and he ate a lettuce leaf. He said that he was in the habit of coming to the garden with his father to get lettuces for their Sunday dinner. The name of little Benjamin's papa was called Mr Benjamin Bunny. The lettuces certainly were very fine. You're seeing them have a little, they're both having a little munch there. Peter did not eat anything. He said he should like to go home. Presently he dropped half the onions. Oh dear. He's not having a good day, is he? Some days, days are like that. Little Benjamin said that it was not possible to get back up the pear tree with a load of vegetables. He led the way boldly towards the other end of the garden. They went along a little walk on planks under a sunny red brick wall. The mice sat on their doorsteps, cracking cherry stones, they winked at Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin Bunny. Now, you see that's Peter there and Benjamin in the background. And here are the little mice looking down on, on them. Presently, Peter let the pocket handkerchief go again. Oh dear. He's dropped some more onions by the looks of things. Look. They got amongst the flower pots and frames and tubs. Peter heard noises worse than ever. His eyes were as big as lollipops. He was a step or two in front of his cousin when he suddenly stopped. What's going on, you wonder? There's a little robin up there too. This is what those little rabbits saw around the corner. Little Benjamin took one look and then in half a minute, less than no time, he hid himself and Peter and the onions underneath a large basket. Can you see what's scaring them there? Sitting in the front there in the sun. A cat. The cat got up stretched herself and came and sniffed at the basket. 
Perhaps she liked the smell of onions. Anyway, she sat down upon the top of the basket. There she is, walking up to the basket. There's the basket with everybody underneath. She sat there for five hours. Now that is a long time. I cannot draw you a picture of Peter and Benjamin underneath the basket because it was quite dark and because of the smell of onions was fearful and it made Peter Rabbit and little Benjamin cry. The sun got round behind the wood and it was quite late in the afternoon but still the cat sat upon the basket. Looks quite comfortable there too. Doesn't look as if she's going to move, does it? At length, there was a pitter-patter, pitter-patter, and some bits of mortar fell from the wall above. The cat looked up and saw old Mr. Benjamin Bunny prancing along the top of the wall of the upper terrace. He was smoking a pipe of rabbit tobacco and had lit a little switch in his hand. He was looking for his son. There he is. He's a very grand figure on top of the wall. A switch is a little thin stick like that. Old Mr Bunny had no opinion whatever of cats. He took a tremendous jump off the top of the wall onto the top of the cat and cuffed it off the basket and kicked it into the greenhouse, scratching off a handful of fur. The cat was too much surprised to scratch back. That was a surprise to have a, cat, a rabbit land on top of you. When old Mr Bunny had driven the cat into the greenhouse, he locked the door. Then he came back to the basket and took out his son Benjamin by the ears and whipped him with the little switch. He then took out his nephew Peter. Oh dear, it's a bad day all around I think. I think he must have been worried because they'd been gone for a long time. Then he took out the handkerchief of onions and marched out of the garden. Benjamin and Peter looking very sorry for themselves. Can you see? They're skulking out of the garden in front of Mr. Benjamin Bunny. When Mr. McGregor returned about half an hour later, he observed several things which perplexed him. It looked as though some person had been walking all over the garden in a pair of clogs. Only the footmarks were too ridiculously little. Also, he could not understand how the cat could have managed to shut herself up inside the greenhouse, locking the door upon the outside. There he is. Oh, it's a bit faint, that picture. But it's faint in the book there. <clears throat> oh, I'll show you again. Have a closer look. Um... Now, while Mr. McGregor is looking at the garden, can you see somebody looking at Mr. McGregor? Have a look closely on top of the wall there. I can see up here a little row of ears. When Peter got home, his mother forgave him because she was so glad to see that he has found his shoes and coat. Cottontail and Peter folded up the pocket handkerchief and old Mrs Rabbit strung up the onions and hung them from the kitchen ceiling with the bunches of herbs and rabbit tobacco. There. Can you see the onions hanging down there and the rabbits folding up the blanket? You see, she was very worried because... Uh, Peter had gone missing for quite a long time. Mums do worry about their children. But it's good to stay safe at home, isn't it? Or nearby the house. So don't go too far, because mums do worry about you. Anyway, that's the end of the story tonight. And I'm sorry it's so late. But I'll try and do another story earlier tomorrow. I'll try not to have such a busy day. So sleep well tonight, and I'll see you tomorrow. Night-night.